Good morning, everyone. Our story begins in much the same way it did one week ago. Minus, of course, all the boring parts, drop lines, and technical difficulties. Infamous curmudgeon, crank, and loyal member of Pine Castle United Methodist Church, Ebenezer Scrooge, having already been visited upon by the ghost of Christmas past, nervously awaits his next spectral visitor. And now, chapter three, stave three, the second of the three spirits. I don't mind calling on you to believe that Scrooge was ready for a good broad field of strange appearances and that nothing between a baby and a rhinoceros would have astonished him very much. All this time as he sat at his table, the very core and center of a blaze of ruddy light streamed upon it when the clock proclaimed the hour. He began to think that the source and secret of this ghostly light might be in the adjoining room. This idea taking full possession of his mind, he got up softly and shuffled in his slippers to the door. As Scrooge walked towards the door, a strange voice called him by his name. Hello! Hello, Ebenezer! Oh, no. What are you? I am the ghost of Christmas presents. Okay. The only present I get all year long that's not tightly wrapped. Aren't you supposed to be the ghost of Christmas present as in now, today? That's what I said. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Well, so it is not. I did too. No, you did not. I did. No, wait, wait, stop. You said presents as in gifts or perhaps presents as in place, but you most assuredly did not say present as in time. Well, I certainly did. Besides, I'm all those things, aren't I? I'm the ghost of Christmas presents, present, presents. Oh, brother. What are you eating there? I'm eating Spam. Spam, 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 I don't like Spam. Then why are you bothering me? You're going to miss it, Ebenezer. Miss what? The move? God's presents. Which one? Place, time, or thing? Precisely. You see, God's first present to us was his son, Jesus. His birth, his life, his atoning death, his resurrection. You see, 2,000 years ago in the city of... Whoa, 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 whoa. Stop it right there. I had to deal with you last week. You know what kind of mess you made around here? You know how long it took me to clean the carpets? Get out of here. Go on. You're completely loony, aren't you? I am not. You are too. I am not. You're dead. I am not. You're crap. I am not. You're nuts. I'm not missing the move. God's presence or his presence. The only thing I'm missing is a good night's sleep. Oh, no, Ebenezer. You're missing it all, aren't you? And the sad thing is, and just the sad thing is that you're so safe, smug, and secure in your repulsive, repugnant, self-absorbent delusions that you're completely blinded to the truth. Then what is the truth? The truth is you're missing God's presence. Well, you already said that. No, I didn't. You did. I did not. You did. I didn't. You did. I didn't. I said I'm, you're missing God's presence. Now I'm talking about God's presence. God's present is presently present. What? He's here now. God's presence is in this church. And you're afraid that we won't take him from the old church over to the new church. The church is not a building, you twit. <laughs> the church is God's people. God's other present to us is his Holy Spirit, which resides in the hearts of all true believers. So you see, the Holy Spirit, God's present, is present place at the present time, which is now. He's not presently present in your heart because you have not truly received God's present. 
What do you want from me? I attend, I tithe. I even signed up to help move all the sanctuary four items, except, of course, the pews and the hymnals and the Bibles. Oh, and... you just don't get it, do you, you covetous old curmudgeon? There's only one word that can save your sorry soul. Regifting. <laughs> no. Tomorrow. Tomorrow? Tomorrow you shall receive the third and final spirit. There is hope for you yet, Ebenezer, but not much. Scrooge looked about him for the ghost and saw it not as the lost stroke ceased to vibrate. He remembered the prediction of old Jacob Marley and lifting up his eyes beheld a solemn phantom draped and hooded coming like a mist along the ground toward him. And with that, we end today's presentation. Wait, 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 wait a minute. You can't stop there. But we have to. Sherrod only gave us five minutes. No, 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 no. What about the phantom? This is unfair. I, I, I'm not going to stand for it. Oh, go eat your spam. Spam, 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 spam. I do like spam. Oh, please do join us tomorrow evening when we conclude our rendition of Charles Dickens' classic, A Christmas Carol. Until then, good day. Wonderful spam.